Hi there. I'm just going to start sharing my screen right now. Apologies for the problem with the initial meeting link. We'll give a moment for people to dial in. For those of you just joining, the export control workgroup meetings are taking place to discuss how our community dealing with the supply chain can look at and get interesting information around export control. Before we get started on the actual meeting, I want to share with you the Linux Foundation Antitrust Policy Notice. We show this at the beginning of every meeting uh, in the Linux Foundation, and the purpose is to ensure that everyone understands how we collaborate and how we do it in a way that makes everyone comfortable. For a recap, we've had a couple of meetings so far. This is our third, I believe. Uh, and during the various meetings, we have focused on ways that information around open source and export control can be discovered. We found that there is an interesting resource available out there, which talks about uh, export control and cryptography, which is the area that most people are interested regarding open source and export control. Uh, and we have been uh, looking at how that existing resource could potentially be updated. The current one online has not been maintained since around 2013. Uh, and we are, uh, after pulling together a few volunteers to work on that, now, I'm not the person to speak to that work. <laughs> the person who has been leading that work is um, on the line. Uh, and this is where I'm going to hand over to Tis to talk about what you've done. You created a GitHub group to um, get this project started and you're looking for volunteers to collaborate with you on this. So I'm just gonna hand over so you can give people an overview of where you're at. Uh, and what you think might be useful to do next. Um, hello, so I'm Gilles Gravier, and uh, thanks Shane, Shane for uh, for the intro. The, the, what I have created the GitHub, but this is really aimed at being a collaborative effort. A lot of, uh, a lot, a few of us have, have been already uh, doing things in, in this area, contacting the original uh, uh, poster of the, uh, the, the crypto um, um, uh, survey. So the idea here is basically to say, okay, there is a resource, it's out there, it's really interesting, it's not maintained anymore and, and outdated. So the idea is how can we take this resource and, and uh, revive it and turn it into something that actually um, continues to make sense for, uh, for everybody uh, as it focuses on export control um, uh, and, and cryptography regulation, which is, by the way, uh, currently the objective of a lot of uh, reflection at uh, international level, uh, since there is this, uh, this work in, uh, in Europe and in U.S. around um, uh, uh, open source inside uh, and, and export controls. The ITAR regulations mention open source uh, in terms of export uh, for um, for cryptography. So, so there's there's a very um, uh, uh, active, if you want, uh, uh, subject of open source in cryptography. And and maybe we could be the custodians of this uh, of this really really useful resource. So the idea is there is a there is a GitHub that has been created. Let me just put the link in the chat window uh, for those of you who haven't seen it. Um, and we are working. We are looking for volunteers to to help uh, create the content initially and maintain. The initial content is most likely going to be a copy of the content from uh, from Bert Yap. Um, I'm pronouncing it the way I think uh, makes sense, but I'm not sure. Um, thank you, Shane, for uh, for sharing that uh, that screen. So there is a uh, there is a need of transferring the, con the content from his website to to the page. Um, there is a need for 
engaging with him to make sure that we can publish it under the under a license that makes sense right now i've created i i've set a creative commons license but his content is if i remember well published under mit so we need to make sure that he's okay there is a logo that you can see which is uh, a very temporary logo i used an ai to create it um so it's uh it contains probably elements from you know, somebody else's IP blended in there. Um, so if somebody has um, has some um, uh, logo creation capabilities and is willing to donate some time to create a, a, a nicer logo uh, that would belong just to that project, um, please, you know, get your uh, your digital tablets and uh, uh, out and, uh, and, 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 and propose something. Um, I'm really happy to change the logo to whatever makes sense. This one, as I said, is really temporary. Um, it just so that it looks, you know, like something that has a logo, not the, rather than the default GitHub logo. So, so we're looking for for volunteers, um, and uh, and uh, you know, please, you know, uh, contact me uh, or directly do a pull request and uh, and 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 provide updates if you feel you should be able to. Um, Shane has already done that for uh, for one of the descriptions of the pages, so it's you know it's 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 feasible. It's open for that please do a, a, a follow-up question on this so essentially what we're creating here is a, a new community resource and um, hopefully we'll be copy pasting a lot of material as individuals we'll each be able to do a little bit but as maybe a collective of interested parties we could move um Bert's whole website over um, I, I just want to check is anyone currently taking lead on him in discussing this uh has anyone got the ability to just go and double check the preferred licensing so to just the optic in the open chain community we've generally veered towards using cc0 to allow people to completely reuse data with with no restriction um, and now this isn't an official open chain resource. It's not bound by the open chain project charter, uh, but it, it will be good to get the licensing locked down pretty quickly. So we know when we copy paste what terms it's under and therefore potential contributors know immediately what, what terms they're under too. Uh, on a purely personal level, I would just note that CC0 was useful because it allowed people to take information and just do whatever with it. Um, as long as the authors are okay with that and um one of us and i don't remember who it is to be honest uh, i'm trying to very quickly uh search through my emails had contacted bert um about that uh, that was me it was steve okay. and i haven't had a response yet i was just going looking back through my emails to find out when i tried mailing him okay um right because it'd be nice if we had his uh his um uh official or formal agreement uh before we relicense the content to something else um <laughs> yes because we, we can't really do anything without that uh, exactly. but it was on the uh, 10th of february when i sent him an email and all I, what i got back was an automated response that basically says uh, thanks for your message i only work in this room one day a, a week and i don't really have very much time so hmm. uh, i'm no. not sure whether we're going to get a response back maybe if um Jan reaches out to him directly via whatever means was successful last time. That would help. I don't know. Yeah, I can try. That'd yeah, be that... great, Jan. Because we, I mean, we had him on the first call and he was very amenable mm. to people doing something. So I, I think mostly we just have to tell him, yes, you know, individuals have said they want to do it. They're ready to do it. Um, under what precise terms can we do it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm I'm I mean the whole point is you know it shouldn't take him a lot of time uh, to send the response. It might take him some time to reflect on whether he wants it or not. But once he's okay with it, you know we'll take this thing off of his hands, uh, and he doesn't have to worry about spending more resources anymore unless he really wants to, of course. Ryan, is this uh, the the link? Uh, to this repo, did you already publish it? Or I see it here. Okay, crypto law survey. GitHub. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, uh, it, there's a possibility to turn on discussions if you've seen that. 
Um, I'm tempted, uh, if if everybody here uh, agrees with the idea, to we, we have to set a repository uh, for the discussions, and um, uh, maybe we can create a specific repository where we can have general chat and thing like that, and turn the re the discussions for this repository. If you think that's a good idea, rather than putting the re the, the discussions in the specific uh, cryptographic algorithms or crypto law survey uh, repository, I, I think it might be nice to have a, you know, community discussion, the repository in there uh, might, might be more logical. And what do you think? It's a nice feature, I think, for encouraging discussion. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. It could be super async. You know, people around the world could be putting an eye on this and not be turning up on our calls or whatever. So having that sounds good. Just yeah. for reference, I was in Hong Kong two days ago, and I had some talks with some of the people from the companies there. And there was definite interest in, you know, community resources, keeping stuff alive and then potentially expanding it. So this was from Chinese companies that might be interested in looking at and who knows even individuals contributing. Um, but yeah, having the discussion online could be useful so they'd, they'd find it easily. Okay, I'm going to uh, create a repository for this. Um, and uh, and uh, and we should be able to, to do that. It's gonna be CC0. And I'll set the discussion channel to that repository. There's a big silence on the channel. Did, <laughs> did I lose connection? No, I heard a laugh. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Good. <laughs> there's no, uh, there's no, uh, no drop in my connection. Okay, so that's good. I, I guess we're used to the um, to the other application where you only unmute when you speak. <laughs> so... Well, we could. I mean, we we could, you know, we could unmute when we speak, but we're not a lot of people on the room, so we can, you know. Yeah. That's okay. yeah, yeah. So I've uh, I've actually uh, enabled the discussions for um, for the crypto law survey, and there is a um, and there is a repository for that. We're all set. So if you refresh the page, Shane, it doesn't yep. say turn on discussions anymore. It says start a new discussion. I'm just going to do that. I have to move all of these windows out of the way. Oops. There we go. Okay. Good. Sorry. All right. So that's done. That was fairly easy. Um, oh, lovely. Good but this time. is the first time I use this feature, by the way. So I have no idea how it works. And we will discover <laughs> discussions. What is the meaning of life? Oh, there's an easy answer to that one. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So in that case, um, I, I did propose uh, a vague outline for a logo as well um posted something but i suppose i could upload that to here as as one of the discussions or pull requests or whatever oh if, like yeah I absolutely did. let's let's start a discussion on the logo oh yeah. that's a great idea yeah create idea here and so on yeah so um yeah do post your 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 logo suggestion as a as an idea for a new logo and then we can uh we can create it uh, and once we have a few proposals there is a poll uh subject where we can actually vote for whichever logo uh, we want this looks like really fun thing to play with <laughs> oh wow you know we can actually get lost down a rabbit hole doing nothing related oh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> absolutely sorry about that no not at all <laughs> um so yeah if we can get a get an answer that the, the really important thing is to get an answer from from uh from bert um no from bert yeah uh and um because if we don't have an answer from him then what we have to do is we have to take every single you know entry in his thing and re-research everything and rewrite it for with our own words which is going to be a bit of a work um uh, and, and i would really like to have a um a starting point, uh, even if it's outdated, then we can then, uh, you know, spend time refreshing it line by line. 
Um, and that could be a, a very interesting project for whoever uh, uh, wants to take, you know, one or two of these uh, elements. So if we, can, if we can start with his okay and just put his context uh, content and then update it, that's better. Yes. And uh, for... Question for, for the audience here. Uh, we could have it as a discussion, but since we're having a discussion online, yeah, the his his uh, his original page is one big um, HTML page. Yes, and then I suspect if you click on one of the countries, um, I'll pick Austria because we yeah. never talk about Austria. You have a one file per country. Or you don't know. You actually have one big file that contains everything. It's an indexed file. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Yeah. So that that is fairly easy, I suspect, to convert to Markdown. So importing yes. it probably will be almost trivial. But um, what about having a structure that's a little bit more hierarchical and having one entry for each um, for each country? That might be harder to maintain, but easier to do up single updates. We don't have to, I don't know. Yeah, that was going to be my suggestion. Um, I yeah. took a look at the HTML and it looks fairly predictable and, and organized. So I think it's straightforward to have a, a script that just rips it apart and creates a separate file per country. Ooh. And I then was... having one master index file that contains pointers yeah. to each. Mm -hmm. Because okay. I this... certainly think that we, we, we want to be having PRs based on changes to a given country rather than to the whole file. Yeah, absolutely. Especially given looking at the outsized size of a country like Canada, where we could expect yeah. potentially a bunch of PRs, but then, yeah. you know, I'm sorry, Cambodia, but you're looking relatively simple here. It's unlikely to require many. Uh, just why, why you don't simply change this for Markdown and then create a, just generate with, since we're using GitHub, generate as a static site. So. We do the processing on GitHub to always regenerate the site automatically. So people edit only the parts of Markdown that's effectively needed. It to be automatically updated then. Ah, I think that's I, what the Korea work group does. Their website is part of their GitHub. And then you can go to the like project URL and you see it as a website, or you can go in and mess with the GitHub with PRs. You should make it even common for the whole open chain. Uh, chain. That's a, that's a suggestion that people that generate the documentation in this format that to be automatically compiled and put in a static page. Just mark down. What's yes. the workflow for that? Uh, Is that you, are you referring to the Git books option or um, no, are you thinking about the standard um, MD publishing? We have we have tons of possibilities to do it this way. I for 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 SW360 we use uh, Ugo. Uh, plus uh, docs, so the whole site is generated by Markdown, but it depends for depends on how our necessity. It could be very simple static generator there. Doesn't matter. It, it's uh, uh, the only interest to us is just the the output and the uh, need to write and Markdown. So you can do it in several ways. Since we're already using the GitHub, we can use in the all the facilities that they have there. Yeah, mm -hmm. having it in Markdown, I think, is a very important first step. And then we can think about sizing and, and yeah. tailoring it accordingly right. and using some sort of publishing mechanism on top of it. Yeah. Yes. Actually, yeah. before having it in Markdown, let's get Bert's, uh, Bert Jan, Yap's uh, agree. uh, yeah. <laughs> agreement because that'll, that'll give us a really easy starting point. If not, you know, we have a lot of work to do in front of us. Yes. So it basically yeah, sounds I like that's reach the first out step. to him and um, then we see further. Do you know if um, Bert actually has a GitHub account? No, I didn't see it. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, he did put everything on on HTML, so. I, I, I would assume, I mean, I, I, he was a teacher or a professor uh, in the, at Tilburg University where I went to law school. And I would not assume that he is a type of person who would have a GitHub account. Okay. 
So if he doesn't, um, because if he did, that would be easy just to propose him to, you know, we, we create a discussion uh, on uh, getting approval from from him and he just chips in on that discussion, says, yes, go ahead. That's it, done. He doesn't have to do anything else and we, we pick it up from there. Right. Well, I, I mean, if he gives permission, just taking this HTML and just messing around with it into Markdown is is relatively easy. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy as an individual to say, you know, once we have his permission, I'm I'm happy to start getting us the first version of this in my own time. And I don't imagine it taking much time. Yeah, um, it, it shouldn't be too hard, but we need to get his agreement. So, yes. and that's, that's, that's until he point. responds. Um, well, yeah, because right now we have an all rights reserved notice. By the Which way, um, I reached out to the Vasana uh, Secretariat and uh, was talking with them concerning the um, willingness to probably take the sponsorship for this sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but they did not feel like uh, taking this on and uh, they turned the idea down. Okay. So my, uh, my um, guess as to why they turn it down is that they're a, uh, a much formal organization. And if they take on this kind of task, um, they could be held liable for proposing information that might actually not be correct because it's outdated or whatever. Um, and so, you know, it's a liability they're not willing to take as, a, as, a, as such an organization. We can do that because this is a you know, very open collaborative effort that is maintained uh, with a, with a uh, um, uh, on, a, on a goodwill basis rather than on a uh, purely right. um, uh, uh, as a formal, it's our job to do that. So, yeah, exactly. so uh, to be honest, uh, they asked me to contact the countries whether they would be willing to take this. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to talk to 100 countries if they <laughs> to coordinate. <laughs> Come on. That's, uh, that's a bit too. Of course. Well, I mean, I, I think basically we're in a situation where maybe when this little independent individual project starts to get some meat on its bones, um, maybe then we can go back to people and say, you know, would this be a thing you could take a home for? And they could look at it and yeah. see, oh, yeah, it's actually pretty, pretty harmless resource. And here's how we could do it, et cetera. So I, get, I think we should just start as individuals, build it out um, and just make sure at this stage um, that Bert's work doesn't wither on the internet and die after 10 years of being left without an mm -hmm. update. So we're, we're really looking at the moment of let's take his work and put it into a format where everyone can improve it. And if we, if we do that, then I, I'm, I'm confident we'll find a home for it if needed. Has anybody actually made a full-fledged download of the website, just in case? Nope, but <clears throat> I might do that now. <laughs> it's just too. I it's think too I helpful. have, so I can't remember where I put it. So that's really no. <laughs> yeah, just just a, a crazy question. I'm I'm pretty sure archive.org has a copy, but oh yeah, actually does it cryptolaw.org. Yeah, it has a bunch of copies. Cool. Since 2000, end of 2012. Okay, so that's a good thing. Uh, that's, a, that's a start, um, but uh, we really need his okay before we... Yeah. Yeah. So Without his okay, we have to start from scratch, which we can use pointers and things like that in his website, but it's going to be um, a lot heavier work um, uh, chasing down every bit of information he has and rewriting it with completely different words of ours so that we won't hit any any issue. Yeah, I, I, I don't have much doubt that he you know, doesn't agree, but it needs to be made clear. We need to have an email somewhere uh, that says, yeah, go ahead. And we can keep that as a, as a you know, for the record 
um, if anybody comes to us and says, well, you guys, you copied his content. Right. And I mean, on, his, on the call, he was clear that he'd be very happy if you know, individuals on a project worked on this. So we just need his formal sign off. Yep. So I've got the code. The entire website is less than half a meg. <laughs> That's nice. Good, the good old days. That's like the. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but it's very clean. So actually, I, I personally will just use copy paste to convert to markdown when the time comes. But even if we're automating yes. it, it would be super easy. Oh, they're, they're, I think they're websites that can take a direct HTML and generate a markdown version of it. Um, yeah, true. Will it be CC0 uh, or CCBYSA? Um, On a personal level, I recommend CC0 because then people could ingest it and make it part of internal um, systems and databases and maybe come back to us more easily with contributions. That's a, but that's a personal note and what we're doing might not be appropriate for that. Uh, that's just my first thought. What do you think? I, I like CC0 because we're doing this for the rest of the world. We're not doing this for, you know, for, for any kind of visibility somewhere. Um, and, and what we want is we want people to be able to use it, but we want to be seen as a reference. Um, so it might, might the, the thing is, can't, okay. <laughs> GitHub has this frustrating model where you can't really set an automatic license different than, uh, uh, than the ones they have as their standards, right? So when you create a repository, you can select a license for it, but um, you can't, uh, if it's not one of their predefined licenses, it's not automatically enforced after that. So if, oh. if, you, if you want to edit a license for a repository, uh, they propose a series of licenses you can choose from, one of which is CC0, um, and uh, and and when you do that, it's automated in their licensing checks and, and coherence and things like that. We can put any license we want, but then it won't be as automated. So, true. Well, I, I think we're okay if we just in the root of each repo just put a, a license file and say everything here is CC zero, and if you contribute, it's CC zero. Yeah. So CC zero is it's easy. You just set the license in the, the repository, and that's done. Uh, and then every file should have that inside as well. If it's different, if we want to have a BY license, which oh yeah, probably yeah. I I think BY would be nice to be honest. Um, uh, the same as we can you know we find uh, Burjap in his in his uh, crypto law survey, and so we have that uh, visible. Um, but um, uh, how do we, I, I think it might make sense to do that as well. Just as a side note, and I, I don't want us to get too much lost in the rabbit hole of licensing. One thing we did find with our CC0 licensing use in general around not just official open chain, but informal resources too, was that it didn't actually damage um, contributor attribute attribute attribution per se because people would go to the main resource to get the material mm -hmm. so we sure that people were listed there when they'd land on the resource they knew who did this it's just the data itself would then swim freely off into the other okay uh just just so you know a side note um yeah online conversion from the html to markdown is very very good so it's no problem to do this. Conversion. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. So, so did you use uh, code Beautify? Uh, you just use something called cloudconvert.com, literally the very first HTML to MD online converter that came up in my search. The, the HTML is very clean, very, yeah. very clean. So, so we're, we're, we're totally fine. As soon as we've got his okay, we'll be in Markdown in a snap. Yeah, so you converted the, the the overview per country website web page. Yeah, the biggest one. Yeah, and it just converted in a few seconds, and we're perfect. Yeah, and that's that's the that's the actual content we want to have. Um, yeah. Even though it says please don't bookmark this page is <laughs> the main page, but that's the one we we 
The, the rest of his site, by the way, has a lot of interesting content, but that's the, the initial one that we'd have in the crypto law survey. And then maybe um, we use uh, an additional um, uh, uh, an additional uh, repository for something different. So uh, it sounds like we're ready to go. We find him, we get his permission. Uh, we get working on the site. And then I guess there's two items here. One is um, Jan is planning to reach out uh, as well to him and see if he can get contact with Bert. But meanwhile, for everyone on this call, I think it seems like it's time for you to go to the, the GitHub and apply to join the org. Just putting this into our chat Yeah, please do. Just go there, apply to join the org so we can list you. Uh, and we know which individuals are doing this because the way this is being structured, what's going on is very simply, this is a GitHub project of people getting together to work on it. <laughs> right now, we have four people listed as working on it uh, and we'd like more. So you know, if you send me your GitHub username right now, I'll send you an invite uh, and you'll just be part of this informal org working on this stuff. Julian sent his thing. Julian, you're already on the, you're already on it. Um, yeah, let's, let's do it. Sorry, yes, I am. You're just so enthusiastic, you want to work on it twice. Exactly. As as <laughs> <laughs> Pair program. Uh, if someone isn't on GitHub, doesn't have a username, uh, don't worry. Uh, if you want to set up one yourself, that's great. Um, if not, I will help you. So just ping me by email and I will help arrange it for you. I'm helping you here um, as a contributor to the project. So, you know, I myself, I'm interested in this project and I, if you want to contribute, I'd like to help you onboard. So it's my pleasure. Um, can you can you go back? I'm just doing a test here, so I'll delete it after some point. But can you go back to the main repository for yeah, Crypto course. Law Survey? Survey. Yep. Yep. Can you go into the Crypto Law no, uh, scroll up mm -hmm. and go to the Crypto Law Survey repository down there? Yep. Uh, and click on the test country overview that I just uploaded the website. Okay. So this is what it would look like. We'll have to, you know, create separate sections for each, but it, it works very easily, trivial. Yeah. And then to edit it, uh, I'm doing an online edit, which is not how I recommend <laughs> doing it, but you can just edit it super fast as well. Yeah. Okay. What we'll want to do though is create separate files and then have links to the, mm -hmm. to the files. But, okay, so that works. Um, and now delete that. Yeah, yeah, we should delete it. We should delete it. I just wanted to do a test. No, it's, it's really good. So the test, I mean, that just shows that the markdown that we did the offline test works online perfectly too, which is- Yeah, brilliant. yeah. Sorry, that thing that keeps happening with my screen is that my computer automatically does reader view. So I avoid ads on the internet. Okay. But it's good. Having a reader view means that we have a, a, a way of seeing what it would look like for somebody else. So how do you do that? Oh, just Safari. Oh, Safari does that. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> I've okay. got, I'm going to be adding Andreas, I think, to the invite list. He just sent me his username. Okay, so I've got Andreas to add as an invitation to what we're doing here. And um, we will be able to take anyone else who is interested in joining. Yep. You, you missed an A. Uh, I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> Apologies. Oh my God. Okay, I'll do it later. No, I can do and um, I can do that if you want. Yeah. Two-factor authentication gives me a sense of security, but a definite actual feeling of hindrance. So who do you <laughs> who should I add? Uh Andreas. Uh I which the which the GitHub ID I didn't write it down. Oh, don't worry. Uh, oh, he 
Yeah, he always sent us a direct message. Okay, I will. I'll send. I'll. I'll, I'll do it direct later. It's no problem. No, I, I, I'm on it right now. Don't, don't worry. Uh, maybe if it works, if I can do copy paste. Why can't I copy paste? Zoom seems to have blocked copy paste. Right? Weird. Yeah. Okay. Invite. Authentication code, but the nice thing is I have that at hand. Done. All right, Andres, you are invited. Okay, let me check. <clears throat> you have to accept the invitation. Yeah, it's not here yet. Uh, you should receive an email. Yep, I got it. And uh, I just got a message from Jan as well. I mean, I'm sending the invite to you right now. Yeah, it seems it worked. We have now five members. Yeah. Fast growing group ever. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, they thought chat GPT was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, process this... works. Thank you. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we, um, okay. So next step, it's get Bert uh, Yaps, okay? Yes. And once we have that, we're ready to go. Yeah. Um, what we could do um, is in the discussions, um, if we get an email with Bert Yaps, okay, some, whoever gets that email, uh, screenshot the email and put it in the announcements saying, we have Bert Yaps, okay, <laughs> to do this. Yes. And once we have that, maybe we just put that... The OK notes we included on the repo, so it's just there in the future. So in yeah. 40 years, when we're all gone, someone can still continue the project. Yeah. What if we do not get his OK? I mean, um, maybe it's a bit negative, but um, mm -hmm. assuming that he will not agree on uh, us working on his project or further developing his his. Um, first start <laughs> so and, and that's what i hinted at if we do not have his okay then on his page for each of the country he has sources mm -hmm. and it then becomes our job to go look up those sources get the okay. content and write the content for each country it's going to be a lot of work yep but it's his site is extremely well documented so we should be able to get enough elements uh to 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 jump start it by ourselves if needed mm -hmm. This uh, sources link is not is uh, obviously working with a relative URL, so most likely we need to re uh, to revisit and import these things because currently it's all um, linked in the headlines um, and it's always going into Nirvana. Yeah, and the links are also ten years old as well, at least. Yeah, yeah. So mainly, not <laughs> to be valid. Um, if on his side, it's working because he has the subsites. But I think that's uh, that's what we need them to take into consideration for migration. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, what we did right now, which is a copy of his main page as a flat markdown, yeah. is yeah. just to check that it works. When we do yeah. it properly, <laughs> we're going to have to take each section. We turn each section, each country section into one specific markdown file and then put whatever links we need in there in a correct way. So it's still going to be some work, but at least we won't have to do the research part. Yep. Sounds good. <coughs> By the way, excellent question. What if we don't get his permission? So <laughs> that was a pretty important question. Yeah, yeah. If, if we don't get his permission, we have to do the research using his links or his research, his sources, and create our own content for each country. Yeah. A lot more work. Sounds less fun. In, instead of a couple of minutes per uh, 
per country uh, to do a copy paste, uh, you know, to create an MD file with just one section um, and then fix the links. Um, it'll be probably, you know, 10, 15 minutes at minimum per country. And there's a hundred and something countries in there. So. So when it comes to our next steps, I, um, Jan has just emailed uh, um, Bert now. So I also echoed. So we wait for that reply and we get people on the GitHub. And then perhaps we have our next meeting next month where we should know our status. What do you think? So yes, um, one caveat, uh, if we get an answer from him early we on, then then please send it uh, so that we can at least uh, take the first, uh, the main the main uh, flat file and, 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 and have that, you know, as a filler for, uh, for a starting point. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to delete the test file right now, just because we don't have his current okay to copy it completely yet. Mm -hmm. If that's okay with all of you. Yeah, it's good. good. So, this file um, settings danger zone. <laughs> not the, no, it's not the repository. It's the file I want to delete. How do I delete a file? Delete this file. Oh, done. All right. Uh, so we swing back on the mailing list with an update as soon as we hear from Bert. And meanwhile, everyone, please do join this. I have recorded this meeting, so I'll be publishing this just like all of our other meetings. Uh, and you know, if we if we have any updates, we'll share them ASAP. So I did a, uh, create a discussion for the logo. Did you, anybody want to talk about that now? Oh, Give sure. Go ahead. Yeah, hand over to you guys to do that. Okay. And do there's a discussion. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to share your screen again? Ooh. Okay, so I already made a comment uh, to uh, Steve's comment. Oh, was the question about sharing screen for me? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it was, well, something <clears throat> I can share mine if. Uh, yeah, you know. if you could share yours, that'd be great because I've lost my window. All right. Okay. Uh, that one, I think. Uh, uh, and now it wants to uh, open preferences. Uh, do you want me to share it? Hang on. Um, Mine's ready to share. Oh, you do go that then. I'll, I'll cancel. <laughs> okay. Apple wants me to make changes and things. Never mind. So share screen two. Ooh, wow. <laughs> so that's taking. Um, three elements from random clip art, which probably don't have the ideal quantity of um, Mrs. Licenses, wasn't entirely sure. But I was just thinking of having crypto and law and survey and fitting these symbols within the OpenChain logo. Of course, that assumes um, we want to include the OpenChain logo. If we include the OpenChain logo, it means it's an OpenChain project. Yes. Shane? And we are on an OpenChain mailing list. Um, well, yeah, true. At, at this stage, we can't be an official open chain project on this website. Okay. Um, be, because there's a slight concern that what we're doing with this material, which hasn't been vetted yet, could be misinterpreted mm -hmm. as telling people what is export control and what isn't. Um, so what we're doing right now is individuals utilizing this work group to talk about this topic and this new GitHub project. But the GitHub project itself is not an open chain official resource, so that'd be my hesitation okay. on on this. But um, you know, running with the general concept and theme you've got, I've got no issue with. We just mm -hmm. probably want to adjust it um, so it no longer uh, overlaps uh, it, so closely with the open chain trademark itself. So the, the main thing is to make sure that people know that what's happening on the crypto law survey 
project is individuals working on it. Uh, and, you know, OpenChain is allowing its resources to be used to help with this, mm -hmm. but it's not an official OpenChain project um, itself. Yeah, we will we will probably want to do that in the main readme uh, as well at some point. Well, could it be um, that they are linked and not necessarily with uh, with the open chain logo? Would it be just? Um... Yeah, yeah. I mean, this idea to to run with the linking them together somehow sounds promising. And yeah, I was wondering about using uh, more explicit chain links. Yeah, maybe, maybe just chain change links. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And uh, Steve mentioned, and I agree, that it, it would be better if we had a square logo. We can actually have both. We can have one that is square uh, because the, the, the each GitHub page has a square, or round actually, but square uh, logo uh, on top left. So we want to have a square logo that looks nice in a square format. Uh, and not just having a horizontal logo that we put in a square box uh, that'll have blanks on top and on bottom. Um, but if, if we could have both, actually, we could have one where uh, we superimpose the three elements, you know, like uh, uh, the, the, the the balance the uh, for the law, the, the lock and the world, um, and one where they're spread apart horizontally, but that wouldn't be the same logo. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I was thinking we could range the circles into a triangle. Because it fit better in a square. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we I think we need something that's a square uh, that 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 fits in a square format uh, properly, and 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 then we can make a horizontal banner version of it uh, for for other uh, users. It's okay to have two different logos, one for one for you know a picture mm -hmm. and one for a banner. Um, so. Also, what the, I. The, the 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 only issue I have with this one, but that's okay because it's a draft, is that the the visual style for each of the elements is is different. Um, Absolutely, yeah. So we'll we'll need something that is, you know, made of coherently styled elements. But you know, that those are the uh, elements I, that make sense. I, I think that um, it all has to be simplified a lot. Oh yeah, to be logo, right? So I mean, I, th I think these are three concepts put together. Well, actually, four concepts uh, put together, but that has to be somehow. I mean, that that's just the work of an artist. I'm not really. Uh, I can't help much there. But <laughs> I have the same issue. I am not a graphic designer. So. <laughs> but that's a good start. So that that discussion mm. is the great place to host. Uh, this discussion actually so um so let's um uh you know if if people have other ideas or you know um, let's um yeah no let's I, I choose mean, this place to to host it work on it yeah and i i found this conversation this um suggestion pretty cool so i'm very glad we're looking at it uh just to help with the the context of what we're what is official, what isn't. I posted in the the chat, but the, the current wording being used is that this is not an official resource of Open Chain Project, but rather one that is discussed and organized uh, by the Open Chain mailing list. So that's just the formal stance of where we're at today with this. And it's it's not unusual. We've done this with a lot of resources around the place. Uh, so there's a bunch of resources that Open Chain has kind of incubated and that have been supported by the project and continue to be supported by the project without being official core um, items for the project itself. I'm going to do something, um, um, Shane, is I'm just going to, to add one line into that description uh, because uh, that way this, this, this is not an official resource, stands out a little bit better. Have, you can refresh the page now if you want. Oh, okay, cool. It's... it's Oh, you, yeah, <laughs> you, you you made it into its own paragraph. That that works well. Yeah. Smart. So uh, when it comes to the logos and dressing, um, just just for background for people who are brand new, uh, in what we do around open source, mostly we try to make things as free as possible. So we, around the open chain ecosystem, we basically put everything under CC0 public domain. The only resource we don't really do that on 
is on the trademarks as identifiers. And the purpose of that is so that we can stamp something as official or not official as we go along. So for instance, um, Gs is stamped as an official open chain resource. He belongs to us. <laughs> on <his new> one. <laughs> and other people are not. Um, so no, I'm, I'm joking with that. But basically um, that means that you know, feel very free to always use the logo for information and prototyping and concepts. But when we go to market, so to say, when we say, oh, this project will be framed in this way, this resource will be framed in that way, then there's always that moment where we decide, is it an official one or not an official one? And that's where the dressing with the trademark logo or not is, is determined. That's just a note for people who are brand new and wondering, why are they talking about this? Why aren't we just doing this markdown right now? That's that's why we're just going over this and talking about it. It doesn't mean that Open Chain isn't going to lend its resources and isn't going to promote this. This export control work group is is here, so this thing of kind of collaboration can work. And just mm -hmm. for the record, I really like Steve's kind of direction with his thinking of the three parts for crypto lore survey and make a logo out of that. So let's iterate. Works for me. It sounds like we've covered all of our major ground. Um, is there anything else you'd like to run through today or shall we break and run for the hills? I'm good to break. Yep. Brilliant. Well, what can I say? Thank you everyone for putting so much time into this. Hopefully we'll hear Bert back from Bert very soon. Yeah. Uh, I've looked into the thread with Jan on that and I'll press for an answer as soon as possible. Uh, and for those of you who are new, all of our past meetings are recorded. You can go back and look at everything we've talked about and everything we were referring to, if you wish, uh, to see how we got here today. Uh, and we look forward to having you on the next one. Super. Thank you all very right, much. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Beautiful day. Bye, everybody. Bye.